the Qur'an was revealed during the age of literature and poetry 1400 years ago. Now, we live in the age of science and technology. In the Qur'an, there are more than 6,000 signs, out of which over 1,000 speak about science. Today, the Qur'an remains unchallenged and is by far the best Arabic literature to date. This is great, but with the rapid progression of science and technology, can we say the Qur'an has stood the test of time, or has it become a tale of the past? Allah speaks about the field of astronomy. The Big Bang states that the universe originated from a single point and expanded into the stars and galaxies we know today. Way before this theory, the Qur'an says, Have those who disbelieved not considered that the heavens and the earth were joined together as one entity, then we separated them? Similarly, the expansion of the universe can also be found in the Qur'an, along with all celestial bodies in orbit and planets alternating night and day. What's amazing is if we take the words in the verse used for all celestial bodies in orbit and split them into their individual letters, they mirror each other and appear as if they are in orbit. Science has found that the solar system is not stationary, but is in fact moving towards a fixed point known as the solar apex. Science also tells us that the sun's fuel will eventually run out, causing it to die. The Qur'an captures both these points in one verse, and more specifically, one single word. Without the atmosphere, life on Earth would not be possible. It shields us from tons of small meteorites showering the Earth every single day, and it filters out harmful radiation that would otherwise cause severe genetic damage. Saying that, the Qur'an refers to the sky as a protected ceiling. Allah speaks about the field of oceanology. Specifically, Allah talks about two seas that meet, one fresh and sweet, and one salty and bitter, and between them is a barrier. William Hay, a famous marine scientist, explained that these two seas have varying temperature, density, and salinity. When water from one sea passes to the other, it becomes homogenized, resulting in what the Qur'an refers to as the forbidding barrier. The Qur'an talks about the darkness in the depths of vast, deep oceans, where if a man stretches out his hand, he can hardly see it. Without modern equipment, the deepest a human can dive is about 20 meters. Only after 200 meters is sunlight absorbed rapidly, and the Qur'an said this way before any equipment 1400 years ago. Allah speaks about the field of geology. Frank Press, a famous geophysicist, highlighted the importance of mountains in stabilizing the Earth's crust from shaking. The Qur'an specifically mentions this. Thanks to modern technology, we have found that mountains are typically much deeper than they are high. Think of tent pegs. They are pushed deep into the ground to stop the tent from flying away, and you only see a small part of it on the outside. Amazingly, the Qur'an refers to mountains as pegs. Allah speaks about the field of biology. In just a few lines, the Qur'an gives a description of how the human is formed, which science has proved is in the correct chronological order. Particularly, Allah describes the embryo using the word alaqa, which has three separate meanings when translated. One, a blood clot. Two, something that clings, and three, a leech. The first two meanings, without a doubt, resemble the embryo accurately, but a leech? Here is an image of an embryo next to a leech. Here is an x-ray of an embryo next to the internal structure of a leech. And here are microscopic images of the head of an embryo and the back end of a leech. To top this off, these verses end with Allah saying, we brought it forth as another creation. With great advancements in science, 
we now know that the initial stages of development in many animals are strikingly similar. Today, science has shown that gender is determined by a pair of sex chromosomes where XX is for females and XY is for males. It is the sperm that carries the genetic information for X or Y, whilst the female egg can only carry X, and the Qur'an specifically summarizes this. In the Qur'an, Allah says that every living thing has been made from water. Because of the cytoplasm in cells, 70% of the human body is made up of water. Consider this. Allah mentions that he created all pairs, but amazingly, he says from that which they do not know. Only recently, we are discovering more of nature is found in pairs, as Allah says. The Quran states that every living thing, whether on the earth, in the earth, or in the sky, is found in communities. As you know, there are thousands of documentaries that are widely available that show just how fascinating animals are in their communities. In the Quran, Allah quotes a conversation between ants. In these verses, they tell each other to hide so that they aren't crushed by the people walking by. For centuries, people mocked these verses, calling them a fairy tale in which ants speak to each other. We now know that ants are a lot more similar to humans than most animals. For example, they bury their dead, they have marketplaces where they exchange goods, and they occasionally meet for a chat. They have advanced communication methods, and in the workplace, they have sophisticated division of labour from managers to supervisors to workers. In just two verses, Allah tells us many things about the bee. Worker bees that gather pollen and make the honey are actually females. Male bees do not make honey. In these verses, the verbs used for worker bees are female. In these same verses, Allah tells us that honey comes from the belly of the bee, which science has confirmed. Additionally, the word used for belly is plural, meaning more than one. Science now tells us that bees have two stomachs. Again, in these verses, Allah tells us that honey is a healing for the people. Today, we now know that honey has medicinal and antiseptic properties. These are such subtle details, but have proven 100% accurate. And to conclude, Allah ends these verses by saying, indeed, in that is a sign for people who think. It is important to note that the Qur'an is not a book of science. It is a book of signs for people to contemplate and to make an intellectual decision. Saying that, not a single scientific sign in the Qur'an can be proved wrong by established science. What's fascinating is that the Qur'an was recited by a man who could not read or write over 23 years in jumbled up order. Despite all of this, the Qur'an contains zero contradictions and has strikingly accurate statements that we have only come to know so many years later. Please subscribe to discover more about the wonders of the Qur'an.